Yeah, I'm okay. already recording too. We're well, already recording? Well, it's like, we can just cut no, it no, out, no, can't no. we? Oh. Hello. Hey guys, so welcome to uh, Hard NMRs Made Easy Problem 1. This is uh, basically NMRs Made Easy Part 7. A few years ago, I promised you guys a practice problem for NMRs after NMRs Part 6. Well, here it is, three years later. So, anyways. Um, in order to do this problem, I want you guys to actually try it out first and hit pause. If you, Lennon's going to scroll over here. And here we go. This is the problem. This is taken from B's actual uh, practice final. And it's a pretty standard NMR problem. It looks kind of intimidating, but we're going to make it easy for you guys in 10 minutes. We're going to try. Oh, and also, in order for this video, in order for you to get the most out of this video, you want to make sure you've watched my NMR series, NMR is Made Easy, parts 1 to 6b, uh, the link of which will be right here in the cards, just click there, and um, yeah, just make sure you've refreshed yourself as much as possible, because we're going to put everything together in this video, and you probably won't be able to do this if you don't know your basics, alright? So yeah, uh, hit pause, try it out, see if you can get it, and then come back and we'll walk you through, through the problem. I don't want to pause. I don't need a stinking pause button. <laughs> nah. All right, so did you get the structure? Well, um, we're gonna go over it right now. But first, if you're looking for the Clutch Prep promo code, it is currently... Orgo made easy dash pen, and mm -hmm. that expires on August 31st. Yep. Orgo made easy dash pen, like pen, literally. And you can click on, let's see a camera, you can click right here for videos to tell you what Clutch Prep is, if you guys don't know who they are. But they are indirectly supporting these videos, so you should definitely check them out. And with the code, you can get 20% off, by the way. Alright, so who is this guy? So yeah, who are you? Oh, hi. <laughs> My name is Lyndon, and I graduated from Boston University uh, this past May. Mm -hmm. And I've kind of been helping Frank out with tutoring physics primarily. but I'm trying to get into Orgo, and so we're going to be working on this video together. Yeah, exactly. Uh, once again, his name's Lyndon, and you'll probably see him for the rest of this year. Yep. More or less. He's applying to med school right now. Uh, yeah, Lin Lyndon's going to help me out and do this first part. Uh, as you probably know, the first thing you got to do when you do NMRs is degrees of unsaturation. So. Okay, so like Frank said, the first thing that we're going to do with this NMR problem is degrees of unsaturation, or DOUs. And so the first thing that we need is the formula, which is here. And I'm just going to rewrite it on this whiteboard. C11, H14, O3. Mm -hmm. And so the formula for DOUs is 2C plus 2 minus H. Ooh, you should teach him that trick that I told you. Yeah. Oh yeah, so yeah, you can keep going. So basically, the, the reason why it took me three years is because I've been practicing really hard at this and picking up tricks over the years. So there's a bunch of new uh, tricks I picked up, including this one that Lyndon's going to explain to you in a few seconds. But, so the formula is 2C plus 2 minus H um, plus N minus X for halogens. So, and then you divide the whole thing by 2, yeah. Okay, so, so yep, yeah, that's the equation for DOUs, and then I'm gonna give Lyndon the camera for a second. So the trick that I picked up over the years is that for this equation, it's you kind of just have to memorize it, but it's helpful. To, it's, it's easier to memorize if you understand how it works. Basically, it's two times the number of carbons plus two minus anything that can make one bond when it's happy. So that's why we subtract hydrogens and halogens, and then uh, whew, anything that can make Three bonds is happy with three bonds, you add it. That's why we add nitrogens. Anything that is happy with two bonds, so like oxygen, you ignore it. That's why we don't even see it here at all. Uh, and then anything that can make four bonds, you multiply by two, so that's why carbons multiply by two here. That part you don't really need to remember because you can just remember 2C plus two. But, yep. Yeah. Anyways, uh, handing it back to Lyndon, he's gonna calculate DOUs for you guys. All right. Also, just quickly, before we move on, another easy way to remember this, if you remember the order of C, 2, H, and X, and you're confused about the signs, you can just remember that the signs alternate in between positive, or plus and minus. Huh. So, if you get confused, just remember that. Oh, I didn't know that. 
Okay. Okay. Cool. So now we're actually going to calculate the DOUs. So it's pretty much just plugging and chugging. So two times eleven carbons plus two minus fourteen hydrogens plus zero nitrogens minus um, zero halogens mm -hmm. divided by two, and this will give us. 22 plus 2 minus 14 mm -hmm. divided by 2, and which is 24 minus 14, which is 10 divided by 2, and so our final answer for degrees of unsaturation would be 5. Yep, and I was definitely being too ambitious when I said 10 minutes. We're already at like the 5 minute mark. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so yeah, there you go. Uh, awesome. The OU of 5. Uh, thank you, Lyndon, for that. And right away, uh, another trick I picked up over the years is the moment you get 5 or... No. The moment you see 4 or more, you should freak out immediately. And I'll elaborate on that. Uh, if the moment you get anything that is... The OU is greater than or equal to 4, a bell should go off in your head. And why am I saying that? Well, if you have four or more, there's a really good chance that you have benzene in your molecule. What? And how you verify that is you immediately check your shift table, which we should have pulled up. But uh, you want to immediately check your shift table and see uh, what range you would have benzene hydrogens directly coming off your benzene ring. The range for that is actually 6.5 to 8.5. Memorize that, but you can, there'll be a cutaway as well. Oh, you have it, perfect. Yeah, so here we go. The range for benzene hydrogens, well, one, one for hydrogens right off of benzene is 6.5 to 8.5. So what you do is you figure that out, then you go back to your spectrum, and look at that 6.5, 8.5, we got four signals right here. And so, with the combination of four signals and four DOUs, well, a number greater than four, there's a really good chance that you have a benzene in your molecule. Uh, actually, this pretty much guarantees that you have a benzene in your molecule. Because, if you go back, there's pretty much nothing in the 6.5 to 8.5 range other than uh, hydrogen right off of benzene. Uh, there's a small chance that a double bond hydrogen might be able to fit in there because it goes to seven, and there's a small chance that <clears throat> you might have some aldehydes, but the likelihood of, oops, wrong way. The likelihood of four aldehydes being in your molecule is kind of rare, and the likelihood of four alkene hydrogens all being in there is also very rare. Yeah, so we, it's pretty safe to say that there's a benzene. Um, and why is that linked with DOUs? Well, if you watch my earlier videos, one DOU means a double bond or a ring. Two DOU, t, 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 two DOUs means. Uh, two double bonds, two rings, a triple bond, or some combination of one double bond and a ring. So four is the critical number because uh, if you have a benzene ring, let's hope this one turns out better. Okay, all right, that's All right, your benzene ring has, it, it's a ring, so that's one degree of unsaturation, has three double bonds in there, so that's three DOUs, so plus one, four DOUs, benzene. All right, so next we are going to erase all this, make sure you understand all this, and Linden's, no, not Linden, I'm gonna show you how to do integration, actually. And uh, yeah, we're gonna integrate this bad boy over here, and we're gonna figure out how many hydrogens are at each signal, okay? So, uh, next step is integration. DOU, step one, we found four. Step two, integrations. The handy dandy equation that you use is number of hydrogens divided by a number of lines, just like in my video NMR's part, NMR's made easy part, 6a. So now we need to just bring this number down. That's easy, because it's just 14. 14 hydrogens. And then what do I mean by lines, right? So this is a lot of confusing part for a lot of people. But uh, specifically at BU, we definitely do this. I don't know how they do it at your school, but in case they do do it this way, I'll just teach it to you. You look at the baseline, which is the red line coming in, and you see how it's starting at this um, halfway point? Well then, this is going to be your zero mark, right here. Like, the 0.5 is, is the actual zero. So then you just uh, count up until you reach this point right here, after the NMR has gone through your entire molecule and all the signals. So here we go, this is zero, then this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven lines from the baseline to the top. 
Oh, baseline to the top. So that's seven lines, and then that's awesome because it's a perfect division. So what do you get? Two hydrogens per line. Now, what does that mean, right? Well, what that means is when your NMR goes through this signal right here, see how it jumps up just half a line? Well, then it only jumps up half a line, and each line is two hydrogens, then there's only one hydrogen at the signal. So that's the usefulness of integration. Um, and then next part, what do you do next? Do you remember? It's the awesome table. So I'll set that up in two seconds, and we're going to keep going. All right, awesome table time. Uh, compliments of Linden. Apparently this is awesome. This, I don't know what this is, but anyways, uh, do you remember how to set your awesome table? First, I don't have a good name for this column, so it's called blank space. Literally, blank space. We leave a blank. <laughs> and the next we leave, um, we don't leave anything. Oh, then shifts, here we go. Uh, and then we do number of hydrogens. And then lastly, Linden? What's this column? Neighbors, or N for short. Yeah, exactly, N for neighbors. I'll, I'll uh, then actually I want to do one row for them, so they can both do it. Okay, so blank space. Uh, we go back over here, and we take a look at how many signals we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight signals. So, then you use your alphabet. So, A. So um, that's your blank space column. You just label it based on how many signals you have. Shifts, I like to start from high to low because high is usually more distinct and useful rather than the lower one. Or something, 10.9, you can just guess the mean. It doesn't really matter. Uh, 10.9, okay. And then number of hydrogens. Well, um, we, I did this before already, you go up uh, by half a line from baseline. So integration, two hydrogens a line, half a line is one hydrogen. And then number of neighbors. So here, uh, n or number of neighbors. Basically, in order to create the NMR, you have to use the n plus one rule in order to do like a doublet, a singlet, a triplet, etc., etc. So if you had a hydrogen with two neighbors that are different from it itself, then it's two is the n, two plus one is three, so three or triplet. So, um, I guess this one. You, we have a triplet here. So this one over here um, is a singlet. Therefore, in order to reverse the n plus one rule, you have to do uh, whatever signal you get minus one. So this is a singlet, which is one. One minus one is zero. So there is no neighbors. All right, uh, next part I'll hand it to Lyndon and I'll let him fill in all of this. All right, so like Frank said, we're just gonna finish up the awesome table and we're gonna start by looking at the next highest shift, which is this one at around eight. And so we'll label this one B. Yep, point zero. Yeah. So the next highest one, that's around 7.5. So then after 7.5, we have one very close next to 7.4 or three. Something like that. Three, then we have a 7.1, and then a 4.4. Mm -hmm. A 1.9. Last but not least, we have a 1.0. So this completes our shift columns. We're now going to move on to the number of hydrogens. It's again, starting from the second highest, because Frank already did the highest one, we have the line moving up just a half. And if we look back to the integration like Frank did, we know that half a line equals one hydrogen. We're gonna move through this kind of quickly. So the next one is also a half, so it's also one hydrogen. Oh yeah, I was in the middle. Yeah, you can keep writing. Yeah. So this was a half, and then a half. Yep. Okay. The next one, the next two are actually both halves, so we can go ahead and yep. put one hydrogen for both of those. Yeah. Half, half. As it goes through. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now looking at this one, we see it's a full jump, and we know that one full jump is two hydrogens. Yep. One full line, two hydrogens. Next one is only a half, so one hydrogen. It's like a workout. Twist, yeah. twist, twist. And yep. then the last one is the largest one we've seen so far, so it's a half plus a full, a full, another half, which is three total. So we know that is six hydrogens. Exactly. 
So you get a better look. Okay, awesome. So that's the number of hydrogens. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the neighbors, or n for short, mm -hmm. using the uh, n plus one rule that Frank said earlier. So if we look at this one, it's a doublet. So that's two. So if we do two minus one. Two minus one, yeah. So we're, 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 we are, we are, yeah, I can't speak. We are reversing the n plus one rule. So essentially we're doing whatever we have there, minus one, to find out what n is. All right. All right, so again, that's a doublet. Two minus one, we'll have one neighbor, mm -hmm. which results in the doublet. So next one we have a triplet, so 3 minus 1 is 2, so 2 neighbors. Mm -hmm. Next one is also a triplet, so same thing, 2 neighbors. Next one is a doublet, so 1 neighbor. Next one is another doublet, so 2 minus 1 is also 1 neighbor. So for the second to last signal here, it's kind of hard to see. I don't yeah. know if it's clearer on your screen, but for us it's hard to see. Not so really. if we actually refer to the question stem here, it tells <laughs> us that the signal at 1.8 is a non-end. So it yeah. has 9 components. And so using reversing the n plus one rule, it means it has eight neighbors. Yeah. Yeah, we just had a freak out moment during filming. We, we kept getting seven, but yeah. Anyways. And so the the last one is a doublet, which as we've seen before is just one neighbor. Uh, yeah. And that completes our awesome table. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, thank you, Lyndon, for filling that out. And then oh yeah, so this is actually gonna be the end of part one. Right. Yeah. So come back and check out part two with us. Uh, we're gonna basically show you where to go from here. I learned a few more tricks over the last three years and I'm excited to show them to you. Alright, see you guys in part two. Bye.